uh, you're also on the board of Armani, for instance. Uh, how are they? How are fashion, luxury fashion brands today, looking at the idea of sustainability, looking at the idea of attracting younger customers, looking at deeper penetration into markets like India? China has emerged as one of the biggest luxury markets in the last few years. Uh, do you believe that? You know, do you see uh, India opening up perhaps as as a big market as well? I mean, we we ship to India as a, as a one of our 180 markets. Uh, definitely, there are still some barriers and, and uh, constraints in terms of customs, in terms of uh, uh, time of delivery, and so on. So I think that uh, uh, the customer experience is not optimal yet. Um, we have focused as a priority uh, on China because in 2018 I've done uh, together with Richmond and Mr. Rupert, uh, the visionary entrepreneur behind uh, our shareholder. Um, we've done uh, the, um, a joint venture with Alibaba in China and uh, I believe that India has a huge potential. Uh, so we still need to work on it, let's put it in this way, as a priority for the group. But uh, definitely never say never. Never say never. And we have to get you to, to, to visit India before that. But uh, I can wait to come to India. And um, uh, my, my concept about India is uh, that uh, when I come, I would like to stay three, four weeks because uh, I have a feeling that India will, will be, let's say, very intense for me and that I cannot stay for three days as I usually I, I have my trips now. So I go to Hong Kong for 24 hours. India, I think, deserves a long time. Yes. And in 20 years, I never had two, three weeks together of holidays. So now that I'm chairman, maybe I will find the time to come to India. Yeah. And yes. to no longer time. have CEO's role to, to have to look after as chairman, you perhaps can take a little bit more time off for yourself. And yes, I assure you, India will require a lot more than 24 hours. You will not be able to capture it uh, in, in even a few days. You will need a few weeks uh, to, to be here. But, uh, you know, since you were talking about uh, emerging trends, what digitization and sustainability, if these are some of the mega trends that the fashion industry is learning to work its way through, uh, what else do you believe will be the drivers of growth and will be the drivers of change? Yeah, another another big, big trend that we've seen, uh, which I'm very happy to tell you the truth, and also goes back to your question about fast fashion. So my company since 20 years is uh, at the opposite of fast fashion now because it's uh, like a luxury is uh, meant to last more than just one season. Um, but recently, especially in the last six months, we've seen uh, a big, big increase uh, in uh, everything that is uh, timeless and uh, investment pieces. So the, the brands that they are doing the best are those brands with the top quality, with the, the, the most uh, luxurious um, uh, touch in terms of fabrics, not necessarily the big logos, but uh, the, 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 the brands that um, and the items that people can wear from generation to generation and not only from season to season, including jewelry watches in this, uh, in this category. And, um, and, and is the same concept of the modern artisan that is uh, more contemporary than ever because uh, in the end, uh, using data, what the students and the artisan have spotted um, are these long-term trends. And, uh, and it's exactly what's going on in our current trading. So the brands that are focused on that are the ones most, most, most success successful.